I'm Joey Sparks. Here's your reminder, God's mercies are new again this morning. As you're reading through Hebrews, you may pick up on there being several climactic points, or at least turning points in the text. One of the main climaxes is in chapter 10. It's the climax to the theological argument. There, it's once and for all, clear that Jesus is better because his sacrifice is better. He selflessly sacrificed himself, but on behalf of our sin. And that once and for all sacrifice has rendered him better, best, superior. What then happens is he takes that truth and argues from it about his high priesthood and the confidence it gives us and he points to the assembly. In a very real way, the worship assembly is a measurement of our acceptance and understanding of what Christ provides. The worship assembly, if you're willing to forsake it, if you're willing to forsake Christ, willing to forsake God, and also willing to forsake your brethren, then you're forsaking it all. Because it's what God provides now in Christ. Well, there's another climax that happens at the end of the letter. I mean, it's, it basically is serving as the summary. Like if there's a moment when all the energy is being built up. that happens in 10, then there's a little bit of a, of a pause as he goes through this beautiful section of chapter 11 and the practical aspects of chapter 12 and chapter 13. But in 13 gets in once again a very strong argument about that what they must do and what we must do as followers of Christ. Listen to what he says. This is uh, verse 12. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood, meaning he did not suffer inside the walls of the temple or the walls even of, of Jerusalem proper. He suffered outside the gate. Okay, so that's an important distinction. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. That's a summary of what every Christian must do. That's take up your cross and follow me daily language. See, Jesus did not suffer in the temple. He did not suffer in this city. He suffered outside. Therefore, we don't worship God through the temple. We don't worship God through the city. We don't worship God through a physical location. We worship him spiritually. We also, to follow Jesus, demands that we endure suffering. And so we bear the reproach he bared. And that's such an important summary and reminder for the original audience because they're beginning to suffer persecution. It says you've you got to bear the reproach. However hard it feels, however hard it is, you must bear the reproach of Christ. Why? Because you don't find your faith, you don't find your fulfillment, you don't find your attention in a city here, in a physical location here, but instead you're seeking a city, a dwelling to come. So think and meditate upon the significance of that. We don't serve God through a physical location. We serve him outside. We, we serve him spiritually. And to serve him means to suffer with him. It's to suffer like him, to suffer for him. It makes all the difference. We thank you for your time. And it's our prayer that the timeless word of God will be your meditation all day today. I woke up this morning.